Chester Dwayne Turner was born on November the 5th, 1966, in Warren, Arkansas. He lived there with both of his parents until the age of five, when his parents split up and Chester and his mother moved to Los Angeles. He went to school locally, but was never really an avid academic and left high school before ever receiving a diploma. He bounced from job to job then ended up working in one of the local well-known pizza establishments where he was a cook and a server. His mother left LA to move to Utah, but Turner stayed behind. He was now homeless and found himself moving around different homeless shelters along the way. He got into trouble with the police on several occasions. These crimes were for petty theft and robbery, but never held a custodial sentence. Between the years of 1995 and 2002, Turner served a few short custodial sentences for crimes which included an attack on a police officer when he approached Turner with suspicion of another offence. This man was a violent person, but what was to come next would shock Los Angeles and make this man the worst serial killer in Los Angeles history. In March 2002, police were approached by a woman who reported a serious crime that happened between 6th and 7th Street on Los Angeles Road. She had been sexually assaulted by a male and kept against her will for approximately two hours. She was petrified and before the attacker left, he threatened that he would find and kill her if she told the police about the attack. Luckily, this woman found the courage to tell someone and was able to give an accurate description of the male. The man was hunted and Turner was arrested. The woman was so scared that she remained nameless throughout the process. But the courage of her got this incredibly dangerous man off the streets. But what was to come next was totally unexpected. Turner was sentenced to eight years in a federal prison for this assault. It was now protocol to take DNA from any convicted person. Once this DNA profile was run through the system, against all unsolved and solved crimes, the unravelling of this man's history came to light. Many hits were made with the DNA and a case was beginning to be made against him for murder. It was said that at the age of just 21, Turner began his terrifying crusade on the streets of Los Angeles. His first victim was named as Diane Johnson. She was also 21 and was a prostitute in the well-known red light district of LA when she was approached by a six foot three heavy set man asking for business. She named the price and went with him to her usual business area where she was eventually strangled by the man. She was moved and found by workers who came to the Harbour Freeway construction zone. Only seven months after this, in October 1987, his next victim was named as Annette Ernest. She was 26 and she was also strangled. Her body was dumped on the side of the road to be found. The third victim to be named as Turner's was a lady by the name of Anita Fishman. She was older at 31 years, but again Turner used strangulation as his choice of murdering and again he just left the woman's body to be found. He never tried to conceal his crimes. She was found in the alley just off the Figueroa Street in January 1989, over a year after the last victim had been found. Victim number four was Regina Washington and in September 1989, she was found in exactly the same place as Anita and she had also been strangled. But differently and more shockingly, she was pregnant at the time. The victims just kept on coming. The DNA hit many different cases, all unsolved until now. Victim number five was named as Andrea Triplett. She was aged 29 and also found strangled and in the same area as two previous victims in Figueroa Street, this time in a building and not a garage. This murder was in April 1993, 
four years after his last named victim. Then, Desiree Jones, aged 29, was named. She was found strangled at home in her own garden. Natalie Price, aged 31, was found in February 95. And then the last unsolved case was Mildred Beasley. She was the eldest of all the victims and was a mother to a teenage boy. She was strangled and left by Freeway 110. This was in November 1996. All these murders that had now been solved were of women who were either known prostitutes or they were heavily involved in drug use. Turner's unique MO was to choose these women according to his preferences and then strangle them. Most of these women were indecently assaulted and this was the undoing of Turner. His DNA was linked to all of these unsolved crimes due to that fact and this would not have happened if he wasn't convicted on the assault charge. He started his murder spree at the young age of 21. The murders had been assigned to a serial killer that the press and police had dubbed the Southside Strangler. A trial was set for these murders for 2002, while he was already in prison for his previous crime. But while this trial was being prepared for, some more evidence came to light. This was to increase Turner's murder count into double figures. A CCTV videotape had been found which showed the murder of a young 24-year-old Paul of Arntz. It showed and identified Turner strangling her. And another victim named Brenda Bryce, aged 39, was added to his list. She was found strangled in an outside toilet in Little Tokyo. A witness had come forward in the Vance case and the CCTV footage was more than enough to secure the conviction and Turner was sentenced to the death penalty. After his not guilty plea and would be transferred from his current prison to the well-known San Quentin State Prison where he would wait for his execution date.